Hi everyone, the level of response question I'm going to go through here is from the OCRA specification in A-level chemistry, paper 1 exam in 2017, and this was question 19 in the paper. This is a rate of reaction level of response question, and it's very heavy on the graph annotations, and I'll be taking you through all the information here on the graph uh, that I've added into this as it was part of the mark scheme for this one. So if you want to check out the official mark scheme along with this, just to repeat, it is the paper one from 2017 on the OCRA specification. The question introduces itself here by saying that aqueous solutions of hydrogen peroxide decompose according to this equation just here. You may have actually done this as a practical. It is one of the ones that OCR recommends for the continuous monitoring method. And a student investigates the decomposition of the hydrogen peroxide by measuring the volume of oxygen gas produced over time. All gas volumes are measured at room temperature and pressure. The student uses 25 centimeters cubed of 2.3 mole per decimeter cubed H2O2. And from the results, the student determines that the concentration of H2O2 at each time. The student then plots a concentration time graph, which is what we had here. But um, I've added in on here a tangent and some other information, which is part of my answer. And so I'm going to explain everything I've put here as we go to the next part of this where we gather the instructions for the level of response question. The question tells us to determine the initial rate of reaction, the order with respect to the hydrogen peroxide, and the rate constant. I have noticed that OCR's level of response questions when it comes to rate of reaction are structured like this, where they give you all the instructions in one or two lines. They don't list them out separately. So you can see here with my highlights, I've got three clear parts to my answer, and I've put those as my three clear sections in the discussion just below. So I'm going to start off by looking at the initial rate of reaction. And as you can see from the other instructions here, I need to show full working out on the graph. So do make sure that you follow all the instructions. The initial rate of reaction is by uh, looking at a gradient for when time equals zero. So what I've got going through here is I've got this nice tangent line, which is that section there. If I pop the ruler on for a moment, you can see how I've got this. This tangent line is for when time equals zero. So effectively, what I'm looking at here is the very initial gradient. So this is the very initial steepness of the line when we come fresh out of the y-axis just here, when time on the x-axis equals zero. So it's this very initial steepness just there. Now, what I've done here is I've extrapolated that line just here, that tangent line, right the way down to the axis down here, the x-axis. And of course, because it's a t equals zero tangent, it does cut through the y-axis up here as well. Now, as a result of that, the triangle that I'm going to use to calculate my gradient is going to be this whopper just here. So it's going to be this entire corner just here, massive. And the OCR um, exam hints for students, which I'll link in the video description and a video detailing that as well um, in the video description at the top of the screen now for you, does tell you to use as big a triangle for these gradients as possible. Now, when I do my calculation for this then, just here, I've got my gradient calculation and I've got my change in y divided by my change in x. Now, because I'm using this enormous whopper of a triangle just here, and I can see down here in the bottom left-hand co uh, corner, the origin is 0, 0, I can use my entire side here for my change in y, which is how I've got the 2.3, that's on the next page, and I can use all the way up to this point just here uh, for where I cut through the x-axis, which is 1,375 seconds. Before I just hop back over, it's not been a case for this question, but just before I hop back over, always check your concentration axes in the exam to see if there is like a times 10 to the power of negative 3 here that they are hiding, as it will affect your answer. But here they're not doing that. So that's how I got those two numbers that I've got into this calculation here for the gradient, and there is my gradient. I got 1.67 times 10 to the power of negative 3, which is literally slap bang inside this boundary that they put in the mark scheme. You had to be within that region. It's very often they give a boundary like this in mark schemes, especially when the points are pre-plotted. So please be mindful that you do need to fit inside this boundary with this initial steepness. Next up, I'm going to look at the order with respect to the hydrogen peroxide. Now, I'm looking at this graph here, and what I've got from my instructions is that I need to prove the order with respect to the H2O2, and looking at the shape of the graph here, I'm going to assume here that I'm looking at a first order uh, concentration for the H2O2. 
And so what I'm going to be able to do here is look at the Half-Life. Now, I didn't have to use Half-Life for this. It was just my instinct for it. I could have done another gradient. Um, and what I could have done is just what I've identified here in the orange. I could identify that the gradient halves as the concentration halves. But I've actually decided to go for the Half-Life. And what I'm looking for is the time taken it takes for the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide to decrease by a half. So by half its value. So I'm looking here at going from 1.5 to 0.75 for my first one. I'm going to see the time it takes for that. And then I'm going to do 1 to 0.5 and the time it takes for that. I just found those quite easy to read from the graph. I didn't decide to go all the way up here with my readings at the beginning because once I'd put the tangent onto this, I found it quite difficult to see the uh, curve that was already on these points up here. And so I didn't want to start muddying the waters with how I've analysed the graph data. So I decided to go for 1.5 to 0.75 as my first uh, look at the half-life. And then to prove that it's constant, I've gone for 1 to uh, 0.5 for the next one. So how do I do this? Well, what I do is I go from my 1.5 out to the original line of best fit, and then I read down on the graph here. And obviously this wobbly line isn't great, but where I've done it with a ruler, we can see here that I go down to the x-axis and I find that it is 550 seconds uh, for that 1.5 value out to the line. And then what I do is I go from 0.75, which is half that value, out to the line of best fit, and then I go down here and I read that off, which is 1,450. Now what I do to find the half-life is I look at the difference between those two numbers. And so the difference here is 900 seconds. Then I do the same thing again, but for two other concentrations. So a nice obvious one here is to go for 1 and then 0 0.5, which is half of that. So I go from 1 out to the line of best fit, not the tangent I did before. And then I go all the way down here and I've got 1,100 just there. And then I do 0 0.5 out to the line of best fit, go right the way down here, and it's a nice little perfect 2,000 there. And then I look at the difference between those two numbers. And there we go. That is also 900 seconds. So by proving that these are constant here on this concentration time graph, I'm able to say that since the half-lives are constant, the H2O2 is first order. And I gauge that anyway from the shape of the line. So because I could see the line of best fit was a curve, that matches part of the specification that you're meant to be aware of for concentration time graphs and reactant order. So you can see my full working out was on the graph, and I've also got my translation of what I did just here. It's nice and clear. It's bullet pointed. Um, I've not gone into too much detail. I've kept it nice and clear with what I'm doing, and all my data is there. This is how I would present my answer in the exam. The final instruction I have is I need to calculate the rate constant, which is K. Now, again, there's a couple of ways of doing this, which the Mark scheme did give us options for. Now that we know that the hydrogen peroxide, which is our only reactant anyway, is first order, we actually do know the rate equation is this just here. So the rate equation is K times the concentration of the H2O2. Now, I could find K, therefore, by rearranging this, but I've decided to go a different way with it because... I love the opportunity here to talk to you about this particular equation because I think people completely forget about this when they're revising, especially because it doesn't come up in the exam very often. I have seen it in the multi-choice before, though. In order to find the rate constant for a first-order reaction, which is what I've got here, I've got a first-order reaction now because I've got only one reactant in there and that one reactant is first order, so that means the reaction is first order as well. When I have this, I can do ln of 2, so natural log of 2 divided by the half-life, which I've proven to be a nice constant 900 seconds up here. So I do ln of 2 divided by 900, and that actually gives me the rate constant K, which I also know for a first-order reaction is always going to have units of S to the power of negative 1. And there we have it. So that's how I would structure my answer for this level of response question. And my clear winning tip here for you as well is look for these clear instructions. They will tell you what they want you to do. And what you've got to do is tick your way through to make sure that you're going to hit every single one of the scientific criteria and not lose out on any marks in the exam. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it has made a difference. But before you go, I do need some help. Please leave this video a like before you go because it really does help support my channel and let YouTube know I still exist. There's loads of good stuff around the screen now and links to my other video content in the description down below, so make sure you check that out before you head off. Until next time though everybody, happy revising.